what's up everybody welcome back to the coolest channel on youtube but look make sure y'all smash that like button subscribe to my channel look man we got these dope videos we got these godlike woke tiktoks today hopefully y'all having a good day just know man if you're going through a tough time we're going through this thing called life together people it's never you never in it by yourself but look man let's hop into this video good vibes only let's get it souls the children as we call them coming into our planet through birth now are the fighters they are the last reserve. They're coming in at the end days. They're ready to fight. They're psychic. They're strong. And they don't care about dying because they understand they can never die. We misuse those energies by not giving them direction. Understand these, well, uh, there's so much to presuppose, and I'm sure most of you are the same vibe. I can only say that what we call children aren't. These souls now are strong. Some are very bad, some are very good, but none are weak. You must not be weak if you call them forth. And if you call them, protect them because there is some unison, some harmony, some karma or dharma that connects you with these souls. That's why they're born to you now. And the fact that you took precedence in life first before their entrance means again that they are still supposed to come under your direction for a short time. You can teach in the womb as I talked to a beautiful sister tonight. But if they take in the venom, the pus, <coughs> the things that are given in these hospitals and by the doctors in serum inoculation, it lowers the vibration of the blood. If the blood vibration is lowered, the glands and organs function is lowered. The vibration of the entire yeah. body is lowered, the immune system is lowered, and you become an animal, a human man. You lose your godship, you must then strive to re-get it and must spend time that could have been spent better. Now we're trying to recuperate. Elder explains Akashic records. The Akashic, and it's sent to the sun by the server, which then sends it to the other side. Mm -hmm. Everything you're seeing on a microscopic level exists on a macroscopic level. So, the suns are servers. That's mm -hmm. what a sun does. It serves mm -hmm. the planets around it. But it also is a server, like an electrical server. Mm. So, everything on the planet around that sun uploads their information to the sun. This is where they even get the idea of store it in the clouds or store it in the heavens from. Right, right, right. Because mm -hmm. nature does that naturally. The planet talks to the sun. The sun talks to the planet. Mm -hmm. So if the planet needs some assistance from the sun, it asks for it, and it will actually send that energy. And you call that Akash, Akash, Akash? The Akashic record is Akashic a, record. recorded around a planet or around an entity. It's the energetic record keeping system. Mm -hmm. They came up with a quote-unquote man-made version of that, and they call it the cloud. They're sending it up to the cloud. And they, they released that in a movie a long time ago. I think it was called Eon Flux or something. Had, Sherry Steron in there, where they're telling you they're storing everything in this big dirigible balloon floating at 80,000 feet out in the sky. And it kept all the data. Mm -hmm. And it ran this future world where everything was based on them knowing everything and recording everything. And the reason they kept it at like 100,000 feet in the sky is so people couldn't get to it. But mm -hmm. she figured out as a warrior, and then they figured out how to get to, to get to the. So the same idea, but it's based on nature. Nature sends everything to the planet. The planet has an aura. He has an aura, auric field, which is we can see when the aurora borealis comes through. You can see that there's an aura around the planet. So everyone who chooses to come here and born here, you can download information from the Akashic record. Mm -hmm. You also have a record inside of you. Your DNA is a record of all the bloodlines history. So you were born into a bloodline. Mm -hmm. And in that blood is a line of information. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Million years or however many years back, right? So they call it blood. How long does your DNA go back to? It, it could go back to billions of years. Wow. So imagine that. That's why I always tell people to have a visual. When I walk, I walk with a million people behind me, at least. So I'm the tip of the spear. Mm -hmm. My spear is a million deep. So you walk without fear. Mm -hmm. So I'm never alone. I never go into any battle, any situation, anything by myself. Because literally in science, you cannot be by yourself. Mm -hmm. If you have a million people, at least, inside of your DNA, then how can you be by yourself? How can you be lonely? 
I'm listening. When the interview has already started, my brother. Oh, you can do it just like this. Where you're at, the lighting is perfect. Your energy is perfect. Um, all right, brother. Have a good one. Hey, we'll be in touch. You already know that. We're already in touch. Look, so when they say, you know, that's why they say do your work, you know, do your spirit work, do all of that stuff, man. Um, just like we have all this information being passed down, we do have past traumas that are being passed down as well. So that's why it's important. It's not just important for you in this current time to do that work. It's important for you to get all of these things figured out so that you don't pass on these traumas to your kids. You know, because you will be an ancestor at some point and you don't want the things that you went through to affect our future. You don't know when you will come back, you know, well, you might. Some of y'all might. But I would say this, you know, it'd be a lot better. It would behoove us. To try to understand. That we do have the ability to manifest and change the things that are currently happening in our life It's never over for you. You can always rebound. I've lived in my car. I've lost my house. I've got divorced. I climbed my way back up. I did it. I didn't for one second doubt myself or feel bad for myself. I don't make excuses. I make readjustments. And we all can do that. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a color thing. And it's not none of that. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a people thing on this planet. We have to figure this thing out. But yeah, don't make excuses. Just make readjustments. Real talk. I got that from a rapper. His name is Euros. Pretty dope. This is why understanding you don't exist and nothing is real makes you God. Time is not real. Let's break down the mental and physical aspects of it. Time, past, present, and future, they are all properties of consciousness. With the past being recollection, the future being anticipation, and now being the present moment. Time is the movement of your thoughts. There's no such thing as a universal clock. This scene in the movie Interstellar shows us how time dilation works. They landed on a planet where the gravitational pull was so strong that every hour they spent there was equivalent to seven years on Earth. Damn. These are photons. This is light. The holographic matrix is inside a light. The eyes absorb it, and the mind projects the world. If light could be a person, any clock you looked at would never move. Light does not experience time. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to wake you up. Reality is an illusion. This shit is all a dream. Using the interpretation of quantum physics, all matter in the universe is made of atoms. The atoms are made of 99.9999999% empty space. So with that being a fact, you have to question why reality feels so solid. This is because of the basic law of electrostatics. It's this repulsive magnetic force that makes reality feel real and stops your body from collapsing in on itself. And the atoms are made of energy that behave as particles and waves, meaning that particle me is here now, but the wave version of me doesn't exist as a localized point in space and time. The light beams. Particles and energy that make up my body exist everywhere in a state of infinite potential. The dust I was before humans and earth existed, me right now and every other stage of my life, and the pure energy I'm going to turn back into. It exists across the universe as possibility until I open my eyes and turn it into this observable situation, this moment. Let's get on some Matrix shit. This is video game coding. This is information. This is a bunch of shit you don't understand. That's reality. A bunch of energy, information, and potential. Shit we can't understand. We can still play the game because even though this is the game, this is what we see, understand, and operate in. You are the entire universe, but at the same time, the entire universe creates your mind. And it's your mind that you view the universe through. And because you're viewing it through your mind and not as it actually is, you're dreaming. This is an illusion, right? This is the true reality. Emptiness. Your mind creates space and time. Reality is energy, information, possibility, potential. It's not a solid physical thing. Everything, all of us are connected. Everything is one big giant consciousness, an infinite mind. I'm this eyeball, you're that eyeball. We're all just little pieces of it. But the entirety of it is you. You just don't know that. None of the words I'm using to talk to you right now actually mean anything. These are random vibrations that you're assigning concepts and labels to, to understand me. What I'm trying to say is our existence is true, <laughs> and your faith in God it doesn't have to be rooted in mythology, and you don't have to have blind faith in some deity outside of you. Right. Understanding science and psychology, you can dismantle your entire perception of reality and see what's left there when you do that. You are pure consciousness. You are everything in the form of you. Once you do that, you can finally detach from life and detach from yourself. That's the recipe. Once you transcend, all of the power is yours. I'm going to show you how to use it.
They told you to maintain control over your perspective. They told you that the trees they fucking cut down are mountains. That's a perspective grabber right there. Because had they told you as a child, like, they had giant trees, but they got cut down. They could have just told you that. Hey, it's the, it, it was giant trees at one time, and they all got cut down. So now when you ride and you see them giant tree stumps, you be like, oh, them tree stumps. But your perspective is different about the whole fucking life you live. Like, you be like, hold on, it was trees that fucking big? And who the fuck cut them down if they was that big? And what did they do? Your mind runs off with so many questions. So to control your perspective, the mountains. And they come from rock formations and earth. That's a whole different perspective. And then the bushes, the little bushes on your planet, like them trees, them, them, them actually trees. So now you like them mountains that, that never don't exist. And you looking at the bushes of the planet, and you like, oh, them trees. That's, that's, that's big. That's, that's huge. That's huge. I always wondered about that, though, too, man, as a child. Like, that was something that I always looked at instinctively. Like, when I seen, like, mountains and stuff, I was like, damn, that looked like a pyramid. Like, as a kid, like, damn, that looked like a tree stump, you know, because you can see the the way that the pattern is. Like, like if you cut a log and you can see the internal, you can see that it's, it's like a spiral, right? And that's what the mountains and stuff look like on the top. So I was just always fascinated with that type of stuff. Let me know in the comments down below if it was like that. It's certain things that you just automatically was like, hmm. <laughs> you feel me? The majority of <laughs> African Americans that lived here were brought over here. No. 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 We're not, we're not African American. Look, I, I I hate to pause it again, but we need people to stop addressing us as that because what they're saying is when you say African American, it's implying that you are on foreign soil and you live here. No, our ancestors was already here, people. So yeah, you know, I gotta stop it before it get any further because I'm tired, bro. Some people are from Africa, but most of us are not. We were already here. That's not economically sound. What do you mean by it's not economically sound? Oh, so what I'm saying is. People were already here. Does it make sense to go all the way to this other continent to bring people on a boat when we know that half of your stock is gonna die? <laughs> you wouldn't do that. So how many people do you think were brought over from Africa on slave ships? Because that definitely uh, happened. Uh, I don't believe it. What do you mean you don't believe it? I don't believe that story. You think this whole land was empty? No, there were natives here. Right. But today we're taught that natives are some other people. No, natives are the melanated African being that has come here since the, 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 the beginning of the Mali Empire. We're talking about 14th, 13th century. We had already come here from Africa. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had already come here. You know, maybe people were brought over as slaves, but I don't think that the black people in America came from Africa on slave ships. I believe the people that were here were slowly conquered. First, they got the East Coast, and then they started spreading out West little by little conquering. And when you conquer a tribe, what do you do? You enslave them, they're POWs, right? Okay. That's what you do. But I'm still confused. There's a great history of slave ships being brought over from Africa. History is his story. Right. What about my story? Is my story not valid? But if you do 23 and me, one <laughs> from now, <laughs> 23 and me, that's <laughs> Either way, if you take black people here in America, mm -hmm. and you do their DNA sample, and you point back to Africa, what does that say? It says black people in America are Africans. Now, the argument is, were we brought here or were we already here? Did we bring ourselves here or did the white man bring us here? You see, when you say the white man brought us here, what you're doing is you're removing our ability to transport ourselves. You're saying, oh, right. we didn't know anything about boats. That's what you're trying to tell me. You're trying to tell me that we didn't know that there was a landmass here. Go look at the, the primary source. You got here, we met black people. When you got to the Caribbean, we met black people. You think the Caribbean is right next to America and they weren't in America? That's interesting. <laughs> Does it make any sense? I mean, when you go and you look at real European history, right? mm -hmm. 
would believe that if they took a bath, it was bad. Right. They didn't even want to change their clothes. They, they thought that dirty was purity. Right. When we talk about the Moors going into Spain and into Europe, the stories in the history, our history, says that when we met the so-called Caucasian, he was sleeping in the barn with the animals. And we told him, no, you can't sleep in the barn with animals. We taught them etiquette. We taught them running water. We brought that technology to Europe. Now, if we brought the technology to Europe that saved Europe from the Black Plague, you mean to tell me that if we saved the white race that we weren't already in America already? When we brought the technology, when Rome was dependent on Africa for food? Remember when the Black Black Plague hit Rome? His face. The cause was one of the uh, officials was stealing the grain that was coming from Africa. So there was famine hit Rome. If your source of sustenance is from Africa, how are you superior? You're not. You get your food from me. So if you get your food from me, who's more likely to travel this globe? Me, I'm the source of food. And that's the first thing you need to survive on this planet. I'm telling you, but look, it's not really his fault that he he thinks that way. And it's good that he's an open minded person and he's able to receive information. That's because, you know, the story that we were taught in school, we have to understand, bro. We can't be mad at all these other different cultures and shit because they was taught the same thing. They was in the classrooms with us. They were taught the same things that we were. But y'all know what that does to people mentally. And it's going to take a time for some people to really, like, understand what the hell really went on. They can't even prove that they had slave ships on top of that. They found the fucking piece of little uh, wood and they said, oh, we found a piece of a slave ship. That is wild to me. Do you understand how traveling was through sea back in the day? Most of those people died on the way. And then the records when they got here in the United States, they got all these other people. They brought white slaves over here. We showed them how to we showed them how to farm and everything. We went into business. We got messed over with business, y'all. Through the wars, the Gullah Wars and all of that, we was whooping ass. We we we, we won all of that. The essence of us, man, we're, 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 we're beautiful people. We're people of nature. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we're very intelligent. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all go out here and do y'all research and y'all understand what's really going on. Understand, understand what's really going on. Stop listening to this pan-Africanist BS out here. They have no proof of that. Let them show you some documents. But I'm pretty sure if you do research on yourself, you can see where your people really came from. And you can see that the names of who we really are has been changed through history and manipulated. Slavery wasn't in whips and chains and stuff like that. Slavery was work, people. But look, we're going to move on. Do we get sick? The end of the world. Now we need to talk about the end times because we are currently experiencing what you would consider the end of the world. And they've been giving you so much hints about it in movies and television and even video games. And even if you're religious, they've been telling us out the books what time that we're in. And yet people are still worried about this system, the school, their jobs, and just distractions and entertainment. Just a whole bunch of things that do not matter, especially if we're currently in the end times. Now I'm here to tell you what this end of the world prophecy represents. It's not the actual end of the world. The world will always continue on forever. We're going through a shift and we're entering a new age of time. What this right. means is that this current systematic enslavement way of life is coming to an end. For the past couple hundred years, we've been in a time of enslavement, lies, and deception. Slavery never ended, it just became mental. These slave masters never became good people. They just hid their evilness from you. Right. This is all coming to light now and this whole way of life is coming to an end. The system will burn down. The end is actually a rebirth into a new world, a world that's completely different. This to my soul family and my soul tribe. Are past lives really a part of your past? How does that make sense when time ain't real? Today we're gonna talk about past lives, past life regressions, and what they really is. Come on, check it out. So, um, that is my answer to that question. To add on to that, I'm gonna 
on duty 215 uh, to bring you to a state of omniscience, right? Um, first and foremost, me personally, I, I know and, and experience that there is no past life, right? And everything that we are doing right now is is considered a now life. Even if you have a vision or dream or astral travel and you perceive what you're experiencing as a past life, it's actually a now life. So what you really have to understand is that you have karma in this life, right? The thing that you do and, 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 and build up negative uh, energy around build up karma in this life, right? So how is your now life affecting the karma of the other past life versus you that are technically still existing right now you don't necessarily like the guy said have to really know who you are in the past like know who you are right now you did what i'm saying stop putting so much focus on the past you did we have so many projections of us coming towards our past and no actually I all that tap into who you are right now and relinquish yourself with the karmic cycles that you do now because as you do that it will release the karmic cycles of your ancestors of the ones that came before you of you in those previous incarnations because you have the awareness that you have a past life now but now you live so what you're going to do Hopefully y'all enjoyed that video right there. Look, it's very deep, man. Hit on a lot of deep topics and, uh, you know, hopefully y'all can go out here and just do y'all research, man. You should never get mad at somebody else's opinion based on, you know, you need to just go out here and do your research so you can see this information for yourself. Just don't go off of what other people say in their words and even my words on this channel. Go out here, like do your genealogy like uh joe rogan when he say do your 23 and me look that shit is trash it's 0.01 percent accurate and the crit and the owner of it even said it too as well you know during the interview and we already knew that because you can't trace the dna like they're trying to do it is what it is people it's it's, it's all cap you can send in a dog's dna and they say oh yeah that dog oh yeah you're african you you got some european in you you know what i'm saying it's crazy it's, it's just unbelievable but you can trace back your records, man. Go to the, the hit up the census bureaus. Go to uh, you know, you can do uh, ancestry.com. No blood work though. You can actually look up the records, some of the census records on there, and get your actual family and where they were at. I know that my family. I know where they were at. Found them. Already. I just know. I've always known, but now we have the the, the actual like documents to prove it. Where your people are already here, let me know in the comments down below. Where did they come from? And and this is really great for everybody. Even if you're fucking, even if you're European, where did your family come from? That's cool to know for everybody. If you're Asian, where did your family come from? You don't know if you're. How do you know they're from China or Japan or Korea or something like that? Just just trace them back. It's oh, it's cool to know where everybody is from, and how we evolve as a people. Once we figure out those things, because, you know, you got to think about this, man. A lot of information has been hidden about us. You got to think, you know, you you, you notice uh, children that don't know their parents grow up and have all these issues and self-esteem issues or just, you know, it, it, they be fucked up. I, I'm just going to say it like that sometimes because they don't know. What do you think us as a people go through when you don't know who you truly are and what you're connected to, who your ancestors were? They want to keep saying that aliens built the pyramids and this and that. It's not that deep. Our ancestors were very technologically advanced. And, and it's a reason why people don't want us to get back to that. But look, I'm going to end it right there, people. Make sure y'all, hey, update me in the comments down below. What tribe are you from? Where did you come from? What country? But look, I see you on the next video. And like I always say, man, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. I love you guys. I see you on the next video. And I'm out, though. Bye.